So I'm Lori Heisey and I'm the Chief Executive of STRIVE, which is a new research program consortium funded by DFID. And our goal is to really try to think and develop evidence for a new way of combating HIV um, globally. So we're working with partners in India and in Tanzania and in South Africa to try to look at how we can create environments in which people can make healthier choices. So for example, right now what we do with HIV is we help, we tell people they should use condoms, we offer different biomedical interventions, but sometimes people are living in contexts where making the healthy choice is very difficult because of poverty, because of gender norms and the degree to which women are disadvantaged in a society compared to men, or other kind of social and structural issues. So our RPC is focused on structural drivers of HIV and trying to see if we can intervene upstream um, in order to create an environment that is more supportive of people pursuing HIV protection. So we're concentrating on four different groups of drivers. Um, one is gender inequality and violence against women, which limit women's ability to protect themselves in relationships. Uh, the second is stigma and criminalization. So in many of the settings that we work on, uh, discrimination against people who are HIV positive or actual criminalization of the behaviors like sex work or men having sex with men actually are huge barriers to people being able to protect themselves. The third is lack of uh, secure livelihoods. So many men and women are forced to migrate in separating families or women are forced to engage in transactional sex in order to gain resources um, simply because they're too poor and don't have access to secure livelihoods. Um, and the final area that we're working on is um, alcohol and the availability of alcohol and drinking norms. And we see that these different structural factors form sort of a lattice which keep people bound within certain behavioral options. So within the RPC, what we're trying to do is understand both how these pathways work, so how does insecure livelihoods create or, or limit uh, the ability of women and men to, for example, keep themselves safe from HIV. Um, but we're also trying to test new interventions. So if you think about how we're intervening right now with HIV, we're intervening right at the point of, of potential infection. So we do male circumcision, we do condom use, but we don't intervene upstream. And so we want to try to prove um, through research that if we address things like gender inequality and stigma that actually we can have a positive impact on HIV. I think the other really exciting thing about the RPC, uh, the, the research program that we're doing, is that we're focusing not just on HIV, because one of the things that intervening upstream does is it allows you to have multiple positive benefits. So if you keep young girls in school, for example, you're going to see potentially positive benefits on HIV or unwanted pregnancy, but you also might be reducing early marriage. Um, you're also potentially setting up that family and her future family for a better livelihood in the future. So we're trying to capture those multiple benefits. Um, and we're trying to make sure that in figuring out investment decisions, when we're making decisions about whether or not to invest in this idea or that idea, that we're capturing the full range of benefits so that we can actually show that it's actually cost effective to intervene upstream compared to just concentrating on one endpoint or one problem at a time.